While today technology is part of our daily lives, Europe seems to lag behind its competitors, especially compared to China and the United States. Indeed, while innovation is abounding in other parts of the world, a crucial question arises. Why does Europe seem to be struggling to maintain the frantic pace of technological progress? In this video, we propose to answer this question by understanding the current position of Europe, as well as the challenges and consequences it must face. While they are leading the world in human developed indicators, it sees its model in jeopardy against other major world powers that are showing stronger growth thanks to new technologies. Indeed, more and more, the technological gap between the European Union, the United States, and China is widening. For example, the former CEO of Google explained, on each of the fundamental technologies of the 21st century, artificial intelligence, semiconductors, 5G, quantum computing, biotechnology, and green energy, China could soon be the global leader. Tensions have become such that, in 2022, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, signs the Chips in Science Act by paying $280 billion to the American tech industry. The USA hopes to be able to counter China. Within this sum, $52.7 billion is devoted to semiconductors. Yet, on several aspects, no one seems to be able to beat Europe. For example, they have the greatest life expectancy, with an average of 81 years, compared to 79 for Americans and 77 for Chinese. On the ecological side, the old continent is rapidly decreasing compared to the rest of the world, its CO2 emissions per capita. However, today it is threatened by its backwardness in new technologies. Moreover, the worries about this are only increasing. For example, during the debate of the second round of the French presidential elections, the questions of delays in technology from France and Europe have been debated. Thus, the journalist Leah Salome had asked a question. Amazon, Apple, Google are Americans. TikTok is Chinese. How do we get a French Google tomorrow, a French Steve Jobs? This question shows us the importance of these topics in our society, but we can't be better in all areas, right? For example, Europe has very good results in ecology and society, so why worry? In fact, this is a real problem, because technologies are omnipresent in our societies and their functioning. At the moment, tech is no longer one field among many others. Moreover, it is endowed with many different aspects of AI, robotics, and computer science. Over time, many of these areas have become transversal to the rest of the economy, but also decisive for competitiveness. Chinese President Xi Jinping himself said that technological innovation has become the main battlefield of the global game, and the competition for technological dominance will reach unprecedented levels of ferocity. We can also note that in addition to its use in our daily lives, technology has a real impact on politics and in particular, on the armed forces, through satellites, drones, or guided missiles. Thus, the territorial domination of the United States comes as well from the size of its army as from its technological power. China is also very present in this aspect, while Europe is completely absent. However, it should also be known that the European Union is not behind in all technical aspects. For example, they have very good results in advanced materials and green technologies. They are also doing well in automation, connectivity, and biotech. On the other hand, they show strong delays in distributed IT infrastructures, the computer of the future, artificial intelligence, software, as well as digital trust. As you might expect, this has big repercussions on the economy. This also creates another problem, Europe's dependence on technologies developed by countries such as China or the United States. Its technological backwardness could put into play an added value of companies to 2-4 to four trillion euros per year by 2040. To put this figure in perspective, this would be equivalent to 30 to 70% of the projected growth of Europe's GDP between 2019 and 2040. If this problem is not solved, this crisis could therefore handicap Europe on many levels, including economic growth, social inclusion, sustainability, and a strategic voice on the world stage. But how do we explain this delay? This delay has several causes. A European culture more reluctant to take risks, the fragmentation of the European market, insufficient capital, regulations harmful to innovation, as well as competition policy, weakening European champions. But one of the main reasons put forward are the social and fiscal rules within Europe, which are not sufficiently homogenous. More precisely, the landscape is fragmented, and there is competition between countries on certain aspects within the European Union itself. There are also not enough resources in the educational environment. This is a real problem because it generates a deficit of competence, but also of attractiveness. Indeed, according to several studies, such as that published by the McKinsey firm, immigrants who are experts in a technological field are twice as likely to choose the United States rather than Europe. Moreover, research and development, also called R&D, 
in the field of technology has decreased sharply over the past 15 years at the European level. Thus, Germany goes from 8% to 2% and France goes from 6% to 2%. In addition, the European Union invests five times less in private R&D in tech than the United States. Let's not even talk about China, which has become a tech giant in about 20 years, when it started from zero. Another indicator that is often mentioned is the investment in startups. First of all, Europe attracts three times less financing than the United States. For example, Germany attracts half as much investment as the United Kingdom, while its GDP is 40% higher. We can also talk about the restructuring costs that are too high and that make it illogical for large groups in Europe to invest in tech. Indeed, 200,000 euros is the cost per person of a restructuring of an R&D team in a large company in Europe. While this cost does not exist in the United States, China, or India. Thus, as soon as European startups reach several thousand employees, they're faced with the restructuring costs of large groups, and mechanically, they must stop investing in many risky projects. For example, having to quickly switch from fixed to mobile, Al Cattle spent almost 10 billion on restructuring, which caused its disappearance. While its American or Indian competitors have never had to face this kind of problem, it can also be noted knowing that the success rate of projects in tech is about 1 in 5, that few companies want to launch it in Europe. Thus, a large company that launches 5 innovative and risky projects earns money in the United States, while it loses money in Europe. This, of course, has great consequences. For example, the $200 billion in tech R&D in the United States is three quarters funded by former startups that have become large groups such as Amazon or Apple. On the European side, no groups invest in similar sums. In tech, the total sum is therefore only 40 billion euros. But how can the European Union catch up? Despite great difficulties, it is possible to reduce the gap with China and the United States because the causes are well identified and therefore treatable. Moreover, the political cost of inaction could prove to be greater than that of change. There is therefore a real opportunity to return to the forefront of innovation and strengthen the continent's security. Among the solutions, we can cite, for example, the promotion of mergers and acquisitions necessary for European sovereignty. In other words, it means business combination, which covers the different aspects of the purchase of the capital of a company, a business division, or even assets by another company. But what the old continent needs above all is to have a reform on restructuring costs. Even if the other causes of Europe's backwardness are also important, the reform of restructuring costs is a necessary step for Europe's return to the ongoing industrial revolution. Fortunately, Europe is already changing things. For example, the German AI Association is working on an initiative called Large European AI Models, or LEAM, that aims to close the gap with American and Asian competitors. With the support of German industrial giants such as Bosch, SAP, Continental, Bayer, Merck, and similar AI associations across Europe, it plans to spend at least 350 million euros to build a new supercomputer capable of training large AI models. We hope soon to be able to tell you about incredible technological projects proposed by the European continent. The observation of technological backwardness in Europe is clear. However, it is crucial to emphasize that it still has a tremendous potential for innovation based on its scientific heritage, its solid infrastructures, and its cultural diversity. However, even with these efforts, the old continent still has a long way to go.